evening, cult members, and welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And welcome to our breakdown, reaction, discussion, review. I'm just going to use all the words until somebody is satisfied. Uh, <laughs> uh, of Andor, this is episode five, uh, The Axe Forgets. Forgets. Yes. Forgets. Um, we, just before we started recording, we, watched, we just watched the episode. We're going to instantly talk about what we saw. We're going to miss stuff. Uh, I don't know how to talk about this episode. And the reason I'm saying it that way is because from my point of view as we sit right now, this is the Game of Thrones tension that you all wanted in a Star Wars show. Right. This is this is the Last Supper. <laughs> this is the the Last Supper. Everybody's you know, in their in their places, everybody's waiting for the thing to happen. Yeah. Uh, and and it didn't happen this episode. Yeah. So I, yes, it's just all the build up. I I I I I really like this episode. I'm just struggling with it because I know what the Discord's gonna be. And and I think the Discord is gonna be wrong. And so having that kind of idea in the back of my head, I I want to talk about this episode specifically one line. I actually just went back and rewatched the scene before we started recording. And it's when they're on their way from their little camp where they did all their training and stuff. And they're walking to, to the dam, the garrison, the thing. Uh, it's all of that. And uh, um, what is her name? Oh, that's Sia Kern. Uh, da, 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 da. Everybody talk about yourselves. <laughs> uh, Vale. Vale. Veal? Veal? Is it V-E? It's Val. V- Val? Val. 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 There you go. Uh, Val um, is quizzing Andor about, you know, the layout and, you know, distances and words. And they're trying to, he's trying to learn a new language. And like, so he's, and they're on the walk. The whole walk and talk was what this episode was, was them walking and talking a bunch. <laughs> uh, but um, he finally says, you know, tell me about this Imperial officer that's part of this group. And she tells him, you know, he, he fell in love with a local woman, lost a promotion because of it, because the Empire sucks. Um, the and and uh, she, then the, the, the she says he lost the woman. Right. Which implies to me that she died, right? They had her killed, had or her, they had happened. her disappeared, and, and, right? And then, and then he didn't like the empire anymore. But the line that I'm so focused on in this episode is everyone has their own rebellion, right? And and if I can break down the entirety of Star Wars and the reason why this is so hugely important to so many people and why people should be watching everything and reading everything within star Wars. It's that line. Right. And it's true because everyone think about any character, like any character in any star Wars. I I mean, now I don't read the books, but in, in the movies and the shows, every character has their thing that has made them either join the empire or join the rebellion and it's all the same thing it's all you know your rebellion is the empire or whatever but everybody's got that thing that made them do it and and if if anything from this breakdown discussion reaction review i'm going to come up with more adjectives as we go along um if you get anything out of this that line is so hugely important. And I don't know if people, I know the people that the podcasters, the Star Wars people that I follow, I talk, talk to, I listen to, uh, I, 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 I listen to eight, 10 hours of Star Wars podcasts every week talking about this stuff because I love it so much. I don't know how many people are going to, outside of that kind of people, those people are going to understand how the importance of that line. And I, 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 I might be overselling it. it. It might be nothing. But for me, that's what you're telling the story of an oppressor. And that oppressor 
the Empire or the Separatist or however, wherever we are in the storyline, the Nihil, you're talking about these oppressors who are there and doing and everything for their own selfish reasons. And everybody who goes against that is there for a different reason. And that their motivation to be there is completely different for each person. Right. And and it's different for Luke, who actually wanted to go to to the uh, Imperial Training Academy. It's different for Ray, who just happened to be, you know, a, a relative of the most evil person on the entire planet, in the entire galaxy. Like it's it, it's different for Poe. It's different for Han. It's different for uh, it's different for everybody. And and I. This show can be mid the rest of the way. We got that line in this episode where nothing happens. Nothing happens, Cody Fingers. And I I'm going to be grinning ear from ear the rest of the way. <laughs> well, I mean, I would I would disagree with the fact that nothing happens. That I, line I, happens I, to everyone in this episode. I did Cody Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, Kern, you understand sort of why he is the way he is and how he's going to end up, you know, either joining the empire, or going out on this rogue mission to go after Cassian. What I don't know. Um, you, you have uh, Cassian and what's his name? Arville. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, that he, Arville finally comes clean about kind of why he hates uh, the empire so much. Or these specific people, at least, um, you have uh, the kid who I always think of as Mouse, Mouse from, <laughs> from the Matrix. <laughs> from the Matrix, um, who you know he's like, uh, I don't know, ADD boy. I don't. He's just he he knows his stuff, and he's getting down into the minutia of yeah. like you know why the the Empire is bad, and you know with with their consumerism and getting rid of the old and making us forget about it and all this. So, and you know, Cassian's in it for the money right now. Um, uh, 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 Deidre, uh, De De Deidre, Deidre, the Imperial ISB, right? IF, IF, ISB officer, um, is on her own rebellion to prove her own worth within the empire. Yep. And, 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 She's kind of being poo pooed for as being a younger officer, being a woman, being what all these different yep. things. So it's like I could, we could talk, we could, it, this, that's the episode. Yeah. That one line is yeah. the entire yeah. episode. Yeah. And, and I just, Mon Mothma and her husband and her kid, who are obviously like she's the, the bad guy in her own home. Yeah. You know, she's the outcast in her own home. Yeah. And she's, She's seeing what the Empire is is doing, the uh, uh, opp oppressing people and doing all these things. Right. And she even argues with her husband on the way home from some dinner or whatever in the car. And he's like, why didn't you tell me about this new initiative that you're doing? And she said, because it's charity. Right. It's not because we're rich. And 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 he kind of like, mm, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. It, like, it, it, he's even rebelling. And I don't care anymore. Yeah. He, he's even <laughs> He's his own rebellion against losing his wealth or yeah. what, the the lifestyle in which he's become accustomed or whatever. Yeah. And, and and his their daughter Mothma's got a daughter. We can have a forty five minute conversation <laughs> about Mothma having a daughter and how that just it's not that she has a husband and it's an arranged marriage and that's kind of come out this week that that or their marriage was arranged was something that was tradition on their planet. Um, but that they have a daughter, and now she's not just risking her own life, her own status within the Empire, um, to fight against what Palpatine and the Empire are doing across the galaxy. She's risking her daughter, and that depth that's laying there yeah. is so. It adds one scene again. This is why this episode was so freaking amazing. One dinner scene where the petulant teenager is being a dick. 
And the father, um, whatever his name is, I cannot, uh, Josh, we're going to call him Josh. If you're watching She-Hulk, you know what we're talking <laughs> about. Um, Josh is pitting her against her mom. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And it's Which like, is why we didn't know that Mon Mothma had a daughter, because obviously the two of them exit stage left when every so, when the poop hits we the We will get to a point. I, I, I'm really hoping in season two, we get Mothma's speech from Rebels. Where she officially denounces the emperor yeah. and the empire, and and does it publicly, and is a call to arms to every all these other small cells of rebels who are floating around everywhere throughout the galaxy. I really hope we see that in the second season. If we see that in the second season, um, her husband and her daughter are gonna ditch. Like they're gonna yeah. be, they're gonna be. Um, uh, I'm gonna just use Game of Thrones references. It's just gonna be the thing. <laughs> um, but it's Sansa, kind of like 86 and her her way away from or kind of getting manipulated out of being around Ned and not being yeah. a Stark anymore. She's a Lannister. Yeah, yeah, I think that they just both. I mean, she's very much her father's child. She's you know in it for. I mean, and, and teenager, hello, but she's in it for herself. Yeah. And so, you know, if just like him, if they start to see that they're not going to have the things, the money, the nice place, the, you know, whatever, whatever, um, because she has come out um, against the Empire, they'll, they'll boogie. Yeah. Yeah. They'll take their money and run. They'll take their money and run and, and go, you know be somewhere where or go back home or whatever it ends up being. right they they are obviously living a very very nice life yes on Corazon and I would like to point out that nothing exemplifies how nice of a life they have like the freaking hover car that they were being driven around in like you see that and you're like <laughs> jo- jo- Joseph and Ken from Force Center last week on their on their breakdown of the episode uh, spent a good five six minutes talking about how they want that car. Yeah, it's like that. Awesome. They they, the they do a thing at their end of the episode re- breakdowns about what kind of toy would you want from this episode, and they both talked about that car. Yeah, it's and, awesome. And as car people, we go to Barrett Jackson every year. We go to car shows and stuff. As car people, yay. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Although it f- makes it. As car people will get, you know, some people will get this, but it feels like those, oh, those 1920s, like Rolls Royces. Yeah. With the single driver in the yeah. front and yep. very opulent. You got the decanter and yep. stuff like that. Yes, it very uh, much felt like that. We are going to the Peterson Museum in a week and a half because we're those people. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, but uh, I want to talk about, so we've kind of talked about Mothma. I'll talk about that line for the rest of the freaking episode, but we need, there's other things that happen in this episode. Um, the shrill. Right? Is that how you say his name? Shrill? Shrill Kern. The, the, oh, is that? It's a... Sure. Shrill? Cyril. Cyril? Cyril. Cyril. Yeah, there's no H. Um, uh, Star Wars names. <laughs> They're not as bad as Game of Thrones names and not nearly as bad as Tolkien's names. Um, uh, him going home last week and his mom slapping him and then giving him a hug after he got fired from his job right. because he got overzealous. Uh, was everything you needed to know about him as a person. But then they doubled down on this episode with mom making him cereal. I know. He's he, he's a grown-ass man. He can't pour his own cereal and green, uh, blue milk into his bowl. And mom <laughs> spends the whole time... I, I, I want to do Count Chocula because they were, they were Count Chocolate uh, uh, Puffs. Kinda, they were like green with some kind of chocolate drizzle, drizzle on whatever. Them. I, I want that blue milk. I just want to try it. Like, it, <laughs> put that at Olga's at Olga's cantina, and I'll I'll totally try blue it. food coloring and some milk. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, his demeanor through this whole episode of being devastated at his own actions. And the ramifications of those actions uh, is everything you need to understand him. And then at the end of the episode, he's looking at the hollow of the younger picture of Cassian that he has. Mm -hmm. 
and he's going to feel from what I, what I, again, from my point of view, it's he's going to blame Cassian for the situation that he's in. You could have had all of that. You just could have had him at the end of the episode looking at it and not, not you, you would have understood his point of view. But his mom, the entire time, like just subtly telling him he's a failure. Uh, like she's not actually telling him. Yeah. But- you know, I got to go to Uncle Otto or whatever his name was and try to get you a job. And, you know, he's she she's very much that this is not a this is not a slight at Jewish people. We have Jewish friends. She's very much the Jewish mom, the, the, the prototypical Jewish. Yeah. Mom that you yeah. Know, the stereotypical um, Jewish yeah, mom, yeah. you know, yeah. the you know, your your aunt, you know, did all this work and you didn't do anything and you know yeah it was just it made me laugh the whole time it's very stereotypical which i think is on purpose like because they're gonna they're playing with that kind of concept of son coming home after a huge failure and mother not understanding that he just needs a shoulder to cry on for a minute to collect himself and right, she's which is compl- why he has turned out to be the way he, the is. Way he is right exactly uh and just the framing devices that they use when he talks the both of them are framed in the outline of the picnic the the table it mm-hmm. looks like a picnic table but it, the booth that they're sitting in mm-hmm. and whenever she talks it's um uh shot reverse shots whenever she talks and it's only her, and and the booth is blocking half of the screen, and she's like talking, talking to him. And then they pan back, and it's the two of them sitting across from each other, right. talking back and forth. Right, she's and, talking at him. Right, because because she's in the scene or in that in that shot, she's talking to nothing, to no one. Right, so she's talking at him to hear herself talk, and he's. And, and when they pan back not. to the the two of them in the shot together, he's physically reacting, but he has very few lines when he does. And and the just the simple motion of pushing the bowl away on the second day, yeah. After the first day, it, he pours, it, she pours him cereal, and she talks about how you you know you're a giant screw up, and I I'm gonna call in a favor to yeah. to save your skin. And we're going to call Uncle Otto Hightower and have him you know, like, give you a job at, at, at King's Landing or whatever it ends up being. <laughs> and then the second day, she's like, I called Uncle Otto and he knows that you're a screw up, but I, he's going to try to find something for you anyways. And, and then just the motion of him pushing the bowl away, like rejecting what she made him is a physical representation of him rejecting this this offer that get Uncle Owen to give or uh, Uncle Otto to give him a job. Yeah. And I and it's just it's such subtle storytelling and such subtle conversation pieces like that, which is why a lot of the time uh, I'm going to keep bringing up Game of Thrones because what's in House of the Dragon, because that's what's going on right now, kind of counter to this and Rings of Power and in in this last episode of uh, House of the Dragon. There's physical blocking that's going on in that episode to kind of show you where the lines are being drawn in the mm-hmm. battle. And in this episode, you had a same kind of thing, but it was done. It was done with blocking. We'll talk about Cassian coming out to the group in a second, but it's done with framing devices, and it's done with Moth- Mothma when they she's sitting at the head of the table, um, and she's very small, and everything is kind of layers upon layers of framing devices to show that she's in the thick of it. And and then they do the blocking with her at one end of the table, her husband on the other end of the table, her daughter sitting across from her husband. Like there's like there was all these kind of just subtle things like that that make like we talk about it a lot around here about show don't tell storytelling. And that was what was going on in this episode a lot. Mm-hmm. Um let's talk about a lot of the stuff that happens with Cassian and the group uh, is um, building trust. Nobody really trusts each other. 
Um, nobody really trusts Cassian at all, at all because right. he's in at the last minute. Right, and they have no idea where he came from. They don't, they're like, why is this guy here? Um, the whole conversation that he has first thing in the morning uh, with Arvel, um, when he's like cleaning his, he's taking the morning shower or whatever, yeah. and sh- they're talking about his tattoos, but he took all of Cassian's stuff and went through it, yep. and he, he just wanted to see what he had. And he's trying to learn about Cassian, and well, Bell. I think Bell told him to to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it just it it was tension building because now you're as us as the audience, we're not even sure if we can trust this group because they took Cassian's stuff in the middle of the right. night yeah. to go through it, yeah. and that leads to Cassian hiding the blue Kryber crystal, uh, like it, that's been a hiding piece the whole time, mm-hmm. and then it comes to a head. When they're almost to their destination, and Arvel, uh, like pulls a knife on him and yanks it out, and he talks about it's a thirty thousand dollar treasure. Why are you bringing this on this heist? Why are you doing all this right. stuff? And them having this Mexican standoff kind of yeah. situation. Yeah. And Cassian comes out finally. He's been kind of avoiding the whole conversation, but he finally comes out and says, "I'm here for the money." Yeah. Which is. True. Yeah. Cassian is there for the money. But Luthen un- understands that Cassian is going to be in this a lot for the long haul of the rebellion. He, that's what he hopes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, I will put hope on that better than yeah. but what he thinks. Yeah. Because, I mean, ultimately, Cassian does have a reason to hate the Empire. Yeah. Because they came in and destroyed his planet. And for. From what we can, you know, glean, probably killed his parents because there was just a bunch of, you know, Lord of the Flies kids running around and there weren't any adults. So he has every reason to hate the Empire as well. I think that he has just um, been in survival mode so for all of yeah. his life. And yeah. so that's not really something that he's had the ability to go after. I think that's a good point because in this episode two, he talks about uh, somebody questions him on, on what, what kind of jobs have you pulled in the past? And he's always talked, he talked about, I do jobs by myself. If there's a group, there's a weak link. And if there's a weak link, that means we're going to fail. Yeah. And so he starts questioning everybody. So in even then he's, everything he's done in the past has been by himself. Yeah. He can only trust himself to get, to steal whatever he needs to steal so he can have dinner that night and right. i'm all excited i'm gonna be, i'm all choked up about it <laughs> well and this is an opportunity i think again this is potentially what luthan is hoping is this is an opportunity for him to work with the crew and if they are successful for him for cassian to finally allow himself to work with a bigger team i.e the rebellion and and go against the empire which is ultimately you know it's his it's his daddy issues it's his mommy issues it's his it's his thing from his childhood that he's just not hasn't been willing to you know to- and his mistrust of almost everyone yeah like he mistrusts everyone um except for the i i, you know, I don't have it up uh the the woman and clem that that took him from his home planet him. to save yeah, yeah. to save him and yeah. adopted him or whatever yeah. um you know he's he trusts that me trust b2 where's b2 we need more b2 right. emo in <laughs> our was, lives he was like in the first episode and we haven't seen him since um uh, one other thing that we want to talk about before we get out of here is luthan the um nervous expecting father in the waiting room uh is is um appropriate like he he put this team together he put everything in motion it the money that they're going to get from this is actually going to be the money to start a proper rebellion that is not cheap um and and so he's put all he's put all of his eggs in this one basket and he's gone all in i'm going to use all the different metaphors i can he's got (laughs) he's gone all in on this idea that this is going to work and he has no hand in it at this point in time. Right. It's it's a little interesting. It almost, and maybe as we go along, we'll kind of get more information on 
why, but he almost it feels too he's he's too nervous, right? This can't be the first time that he has done this kind of stuff. I and I yeah, mean I, I, agree with I that. get that the stakes might be higher in this, but if they fail it it's not gonna come back on him. It's not gonna come back on Mon Mothma. I I think that he is in such a spot. I think he emotionally, um, ecumenically, 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 that would be a lot funnier if I actually say that word. <laughs> uh, he is in such a spot that he, he cannot allow himself to think of anything else working if this does not work. Yeah, and it may just be like, you know, as we kind of see with Mom Mothma's home life, um, that they're kind of running up against a wall, right? They're yeah. they're kind of getting to the point where something either needs to work or we're going off the cliff. Yeah. But yeah, I, I thought it was a little interesting. Like he was very nervous, concerned, worried about, and it's like, you were all sure and headstrong when you went and got Cassian. You know, I'm I'm this badass guy, and now you're like, oh my god. Uh, uh, this is this kind of feels like one of those. Um, uh, I want I don't want to say story tropes, but one of those concepts in stories where it's it's, it's a small heist. It's not, not a big deal. It's a small rebellion. It's it, it's on a local level. Whatever. It's not. It's not big yet it's a bunch of like little groups doing things yeah and this is the first big major step forward into the concept of we are not necessarily um planting our flag on the ground that comes later but this is the first like if, if we pull this and it happens we're going to be on everybody's radar and if it doesn't work we're definitely going to be on everybody's radar yeah and, yeah. and that that ties perfectly into Deidre's kind of them going over the files once again yeah. to try to pick stuff. And her saying if if this was, if it was me this is exactly how I would do it. it. Yeah, These little yeah. hits very far apart. And I think those two stories are kind of mirroring each other but they're not they're not touching each other right, right. now. So or par- I'll say parallel with yeah. each other. Yeah. But, but She's coming up from the point of view of this is the way I would do it, but there's no real proof that I can go to my superiors to get that promotion, which I love that they had the whole conversation um, on the planet, the, the Cassian's planet or whatever, where he, they're trying to give it to the lieutenant or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> you can call yourself and wear ropes, whatever. I just want this up and running. But he was there only for the promotion. Yeah. And he was like, I know it's not more money, but can I be called? called grand chancellor or whatever something. whatever yeah, he's and, like you can wear a dress i don't care yeah it, but <laughs> but that idea of you're only in the empire to get a promotion to better yourself to get move on is something that deirdre is definitely working deirdre here i'm gonna go with deirdre and talk to <laughs> uh um it's definitely something that she is trying to do and she thinks that Pointing out the bringing of this rebellion and stuff to um, to her superiors will get her there, and because of all that going on, and what Luthen, if this goes the way he thinks it's going to go, and it goes badly, or it goes against what he thinks is going to happen, and it goes badly, it's going to put them all on the map, which is going to mean that Deirdre is going to have more information to go after them, and now all of those people are going to be. Out, not exposed, but at least out in the open enough to go. Like, oh, okay, this person here is directly involved in something. We need to question them. Bring them. Yeah, in. it's definitely going to be a bigger blip on the radar yeah. than these little yeah. onesie twosies all over the yeah, place. Yeah, if, if you go and steal the quarterly payroll from the Empire, it's a huge deal, right? And so the best case scenario is it's gonna it, you're gonna get it done, and but then every all the all the eyes are now going to be looking on who actually pulled this job. Right. So you get it done and then you go underground and, yeah. and quietly use the money to, to, to do, do whatever, whatever it you is. need to do. And stuff yeah. Like that. yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, I guess that's where we're going to, I guess we're going to 
stop there with our breakdown discussion re- reaction review. Um, it's just going to get a longer title. A long title. <laughs> um, uh, I think we're going to stop there because I really want to like digest what this episode is some more. Uh, I don't like doing recency bias. This is my favorite episode. Of blah, 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 blah. But what this does for Star Wars and what it does for the Andor series, I think is highly important. And uh, I think the discussion is going to be mixed on this, but I think ultimately people are going to come down to this was an actually a really important, awesome episode. Right. It's always the ones that are like, nothing happened, that everything happens. <laughs> I will say the science, uh, Imperial Science Officer uh, in is coming uh, to the garrison. We're five years out from Rogue One. And so it's possible. I'm not putting it anything in stone because they have made a point of like, we're not doing cameos. We're not doing Easter eggs. We're not doing. And then we went into Luthen's freaking antiquities shop yeah. last week. And there was, <laughs> there was Easter eggs everywhere. everywhere. Um, but and we're back. Uh, technology is whipping our ass today. Uh, we were talking about the science officer who's, uh, who's showing up uh, and an Imperial science officer, uh, at this point in time, who's working their way up to the the ranks is Orson Krennic. Yep, and uh, and I, he is very big on. He wants to make sure that uh, that Vader and and Palpatine know about him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in Catalyst, I'm I re I I've been re listening to Catalyst lately, and they uh, have it's Catalyst is is the prequel to Rogue One, and it's about Orson and his working his way up to being the person in charge of building the Death Star. And and it's also the story about Galen and bringing him back into the fold of the Empire to actually do the science this, because he's the one who figures out how to build the laser. And so the, 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 the possibility of it actually being one of the two of them I think is pretty high. It makes sense that it's Orson because Orson is at this point not quite where he wants to be uh so i don't know why he would want to be coming out to this garrison out in the middle of nowhere but it also doesn't necessarily mean he might be there just to watch the 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 ritual the yeah the the lights in the sky right right all right uh it's but they've talked about like there's not gonna be easter eggs it's not gonna be you know, uh, cameos. This one makes this is one of those that, like Saw, it makes sense. Yeah, where we are in the time. Well, we know Saw is going to be in it, so right. there is going to be a, at least one cameo. I, but I, but I, I, a cameo for cameo's sake is is having Warwick Davis on screen uh, um, as a background character. That's a cameo to me. Saw being in this makes story sense. Yeah, yeah. Because we're talking about whatever small rebel groups or whatever fighting against the empire. But because of that, we're also going to get people of importance in the empire floating around. I wouldn't be surprised if if Tarkin's name is thrown around or Masamita's name is thrown. I mean, Masamita's name was thrown around in the last episode, but like, just like things like that make sense for where we are in the story right now. Yeah. And so having them show up or, be there or be you know, be a person that's not on screen but is talked about is I it all all of that makes sense to me. Yep. All of that makes yep. sense. Yep. Absolutely. Uh and if we don't get Captain Antilles, um I, I could go deep into the whole rebel stuff. So let us know uh anything else. I think we're no. gonna cut it off there. Let us know what you thought of our breakdown and discussion and review and reaction uh to this episode, uh The Axe Forgets, uh episode five. Of, we have seven more episodes of this show. Yay! Let us know <laughs> of the episode in the comments down below. Please be nice. Subscribe around here. Like this episode. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. And follow us on all the social media stuff. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Links in the description down below. I need a cocktail. And until next time, cult members, good afternoon, good evening, and good night now.